Ladies and gentlemen, if you're a budget-focused PC gamer, then there's some great news on the horizon with both AMD and NVIDIA waiting in the wings to launch their respective GPUs. We're going to get into some benchmarks of the 4060 Ti and some pricing updates that I've received concerning that. Then we'll move on to the 7600 where I'm going to talk about the performance and some exclusive pricing stuff. And then we will finish the video off with official AMD comments as they discuss AI, hybrid CPUs, and basically their vision of the future. So let's start things out first of all with a CUDA score from the 4060 Ti which was leaked um, courtesy of Geekbench. Now basically speaking this result is 146,200. WCCF Tech have done a nice comparison here versus like the average 3070 and 3060 Ti. You can see on screen yourself how it kind of shapes up. Now obviously this is not a gaming result so obviously your mileage will vary based upon the game, the engine and so on and so on but there's nothing really to write home about in the specifications. It has been basically confirmed that the specs that we've been talking about for some time now are essentially what NVIDIA will uh, release. So 4,352 CUDA cores. Of course, there will be two versions of this card. There will be both an 8 and 16 gigabyte variant with the 16 gigabyte, of course, having identical specifications. The only difference is a slightly higher TDP. It's five watts more. And well, more RAM, which, you know, that kind of goes without saying, really, doesn't it? Given the fact it's 16 versus 8. Very technical. But anywho, um, as for the pricing, so I want to give you guys a couple of updates because this stuff gets a little interesting. So back in late April, I think it was around the 24th, I posted the video, at least according to what I'm seeing here in my notes of the script, um, the 4060 Ti I'd initially been hearing was going to be 450 US dollars. That's what I was stating actually prior to this information. But then um, some sources actually told me that this was no longer the case. There was a report both from DigiTimes and my own sources that told me that it's more likely going to be around 400 US dollars, 399 MSRP, possibly a little more, but basically 400 bucks. There are multiple reasons that this is the case. One, of course, is that, well, the cards just were not selling as well. The 4070 in particular seemed rather sluggish when it came to the sales from store shelves. Now, it's possible that 450 could also have been the price for the 16 gigabyte variant. Obviously, at the end of the day, prices are not set in stone and can and will change up until the very last minute. And this brings me to AMD, 299 US dollars. Um, this seems to be the price that we're looking at for the 7600. And this is actually not much of a change versus what I'd heard initially. So in um, on the 9th of May, I said that the 7600 was 329, but I'd also heard that some cards were going to be 300 bucks. Although in my script, I hope I didn't say it in the video, but in the script I said that the 7600 XT because my brain was just apparently having a fart. But anyway, yeah, 300 bucks for the 7600. Um, and this does seem to still be the case because I've received some information that it appears to be from official slides. Obviously, I can't share too much information about this because I don't want AMD to start, you know, cracking down on whomever sent it. Um, and obviously, I cannot verify that this information is true for obvious reasons, but I think it probably is because this pretty much parrots what a lot of what I said previously. So 299 US dollars. And they were eff effectively comparing the card to the 3060 8 gigabyte and 12 gigabyte. So the performance targets are actually a little weird. They're claiming 34% faster than the 3068 gigabyte, with 17% faster than the 3060 12 gigabyte. And they're actually mentioning, from what I understand anyway, that this is an upgrade for the RTX 2060 owners. <laughs> Um, which is a weird comparison, I suppose. It technically has been a couple of generations now, you know, since those cards launched. And if you have, let's say, a 2060 or a 1660 or something like that, 
obviously it's a very big upgrade i'm surprised honestly they also didn't mention some of their own rdna one cards or even polaris like the rx uh, 480 or 580 would be a nice comparison but from what i understand this was not mentioned the only problem while these prices are definitely cheaper than a lot of uh, speculative uh, you know a lot of information was seemingly stating um, at least early on. It's also perhaps not as cheap as what we'd hoped for. For example, I'm just using eBay uh, US at the moment, and the 3060 Ti, depending obviously on the model, is low 300 US dollars. If I check the 3070, um, 350 ish bucks. So, yeah it's it's quite difficult i mean personally speaking i don't know if the 7600 would tickle me um in in the nice spots i don't know obviously everyone's different but the other the other x factor is also arc intel are constantly cutting the price of arc um several months ago when it first launched i would have not even slightly recommended it but intel have done wonders with the drivers it's still not perfect and if you're someone who just wants to click on a game and just have it run, maybe Arc isn't necessarily for you. But if you're someone who wants a deal or happy to bugger around a little bit with drivers and kind of deal with the odd issue here or there, Arc A750 is really good value for money, at least in my personal opinion. They still have a ways to go, but for the price, it's very impressive indeed, actually. So I'm going to be very interested for the record, um, I was also told a bunch of other prices. Um, obviously, this stuff can and will change. I was told that the 4060, and I've mentioned this price before, is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 329 US dollars, and the 4050 could be about 250 bucks, give or take. Obviously, these prices, as I just said, can and will change literally the last minute. But um, now let's move on to some official comments from AMD. This is actually a very long interview, which was conducted by Paul Acorn over at Tom's Hardware. And he was speaking to Mark Papermaster, of course, from AMD. And uh, there's been a lot of very interesting comments actually in this uh, interview. I won't go through all of them because quite frankly, I will be here until you know tomorrow if I was to read out all of this interview. But one thing they did state is that hybrid architectures, of course, will be coming to client PC. They are already here. That's obviously like big little designs. Um, to my understanding, Zen 5 is not gonna be big little for desktop. It will, of course, only be the big quote unquote core, so Zen 5. Um, however, um, obviously you will have mobile variants which will also have let's say Zen 5C in them which are more energy efficient essentially they run at lower clock frequency but to my personal understanding at the moment anyway there are no differences let's say in SMT support or CPU instructions or anything like that they basically are identical now this is not a small detail but it's it's perhaps something that isn't T-flops or amount of bandwidth and it doesn't directly impact us now, so I think it's very easy to just look over this. But Mark Papermaster, in a fairly long uh, quote here, is talking about AI and how the fact that it is becoming pervasive. Now, obviously, AMD are starting to incorporate ML blocks in their GPUs, but interestingly, they are also stating that now it's becoming incorporated in their design. And this is helping in numerous ways. Perhaps one of the most obvious ones is verification and validation. Now, this is quite difficult, actually, because, well, back in the day where transistor counts were, well, not billions, it wasn't such a big deal. But now, obviously, you have billions upon billions upon billions of transistors in some of these chips, and it becomes a lot more difficult to essentially test them. So, obviously, uh, design and iteration can become a lot faster. So this is actually very interesting because it basically means that they can essentially build and check and fault test and iron out bugs much faster. Now, I personally have heard, I cannot verify this, but I've heard through the grapevine that NVIDIA have been using this quite extensively with the last couple of generations of their GPUs when it comes to um, uh, designing them. So it's quite interesting that we're seeing this now from AMD. I mean, obviously at the end of the day, you know, it's not like this is super new technology, you know, AI and, you know, chip validation is something that's been going on for a while, 
but basically it seems that AMD are really starting to step up and it's going to be very interesting. Now Mark does believe that we won't actually see chip designers being replaced anytime soon but it will help speed up the design. Um, for example, will generative AI replace artistry? Will it replace novels? No, but they can assist in the process. So basically, this is going to be essentially chip design on steroids. It will be much faster, there will be much more iteration, and in theory, anyway, we'll see more improvements because obviously, if you can see, well, it's not quite the same thing as a new pair of eyes, but if you could basically get much faster feedback and a different way of actually looking at the chip, it's obviously going to mean the performance targets are going to be a lot faster. I also want to mention just really briefly, um, this is not tech news, but I know a lot of you guys have been really waiting for this. At 1 p.m. PDT or 9 p.m. Uh, BST on the 24th of May this year, of course, which is essentially next Wednesday, PlayStation will be hosting their new showcase. And they are essentially teasing us that there will be, yes, PSVR 2 stuff, but also a lot of PS5 new things will be shown. Um, and I think it's going to be a very interesting showcase indeed. I suspect both Microsoft as well as Sony are going to come out swinging this year. It's going to be very interesting to see how Microsoft handles things because obviously there's been a lot of disappointment on the Xbox side. I think that um, they've got to balance things as in... They don't want to come across uh, by just releasing a bunch of trailers for stuff that just essentially is not going to be released for four years. But they also, of course, need to bring the hype and really excite people. I think Sony are definitely quite strong going into this. There's a lot of expectation that we're going to see games like Metal Gear, of course. I will also be very, very interested to see if we see any additional PC confirmation uh, for titles being ported. So anyway, with that said, guys, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.